I already hit start. So Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back, along with Alexa's air conditioner, which is very loud. And if it starts to get annoying, somebody tell us in the comments. Um, we're trying to keep her, you know, a little cool. So yeah, um, I don't have air conditioning in my bedroom, so I, I only have AC in the living room. So please spare me. But if you guys can't hear me talk, I'll probably turn it off. Yeah, there you go. See, she's caring a little bit. Um, anyway, Survivor Panama is about to begin. Before we do that, if you wa if you joined us through all of Guatemala. I hope you enjoyed it. We had fun rewatching it. It really helps the season when you get to talk about it a lot. I guess Alexa doesn't want to hear me talk about it because she just got up to turn her air conditioning off. Um, I just, I just, you know, I just want to hear your opinion more. Yeah, exactly. And it all culminated with the Judge Sergeant tell all, which we kind of said was our finale recap. It wasn't. I mean, yeah, it was, but it was Judd. It was a Judd interview, and anybody who would rather hear us talk about the finale of the last three episodes. I think you're crazy because I think Judd's interview was hilarious. I saw somebody put on Reddit that the little clip of him admitting he had ADD, which was great. <laughs> I loved seeing that. Um, and AT&T. And AT&T and all that stuff. He didn't even know what it was. They had to tell him. Um, <laughs> so whoever posted that, if you're a listener, I'm assuming you are. But if you're here, thank you. It was um, also – it, it might have been one of my – like favorite interviews that we've done. I mean, you've done way more than I have because I'm still kind of new to this. But when you rewatch that video, it is the most like dad on FaceTime thing ever. Because the entire video, it's like, oh, there's his hat. Like maybe maybe he'll turn it back down again. I loved it. It was. Have it, you it was visited so... Judd yet? No, I haven't because I have been at work. Wow. So Alexa's gonna have to visit Judd. Otherwise, I think Judd's gonna die of a broken heart. So. Um, oh, stop. But if you haven't seen that, go watch the Judd interview. That was a really fun interview to do. Anybody who watched our Brett interview back during uh, Millennials vs. Gen X when it was Will and I, this reminded me a lot of that, but this was a lot more scatterbrained. Um, <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, right now, I know some of our listeners, maybe, I can't give away names considering you guys are sworn to secrecy, but our org is going on right now. So anybody who's partaking in that, the merge is tonight. So everybody's actually like over there playing that. So if our viewership is down or if some of our regulars aren't here, we know why. Um, some of our regulars forgot what an org was about three days into the org and stopped showing up all entirely. But that's beside the fact we'll let Blake come on and rant about them. Um, well, at some point. It's just kind of like the beginning of any season, just like the beginning of Panama. You got to weed out the week. They don't yeah. want to play. You got to vote them out. But here's my thing. If you want to talk about weeding out the week in Panama, if you don't want to play, you vote him out. Poor Melinda. Poor, oh. poor, um, God, what is her name? Why did I already forget the first boot's name? Tina. Oh, Tina, my gosh. Tina's an awesome Trish. first boot. I work with a Trish, so it was stuck in my head. And then poor Misty. All three of them wanted to play. There's they one person. One person yeah. out there who doesn't want to play, we all know who it is, and that, that's Shane Powers. And Melinda's vote out is the classic example of, I'm here to play. I am useful. I can be loyal. And you have your alliance member, and you're going to keep them because they're in your alliance. And we know how it works out in the end, but you, you can't help but feel bad for that person. And, and there's no, there's almost no talent to it. It's just the way the chips fall. And they thought they were weeding out the week. I mean, not Tina. They actively voted out their strongest player. And we'll get to talking about that. But they think they were voting out the week in Misty and Melinda. But Melinda, I think, was very physically capable. Misty was really playing strategically in the week that she was out there. So they think they're voting out the week, but they're really not. And I think that comes with dividing up the tribes between older women, which is probably the worst tribe, like, tribe name to be on, especially when Melinda, I think, was 30. Two? 34? Well, and, uh, real quick, while you're talking about that, I know season 36 cast was like leaked. We don't talk about the cast until the actual cast is announced by CBS. That's when we do our assessment and everything. But real quick, remember Shane and Melinda and even Suri are on the old tribe here. So everybody complaining that season 36 is only young people. Think about like even back in season 12, <laughs> they were putting 30 something year olds on the old tribe. So it has, it's not that much different than it used to be. Yeah, and I was actually looking this up because um, Bob Dog was the same, he's a 32 or 34, I can't put the number in my head. He was the same age as Melinda. She was three months older than him, and she got put on an older tribe, and he got put on a younger tribe. Yeah. It's kind of like um, Ken and Mari, yeah. I think, are pretty close, too. Like, it's, it's not, they don't really break it out that way. 
No, and and that's what I think. Like I saw, like there was a lot of like people going crazy over thirty six. I know Redmond was really going crazy over, like, oh my god, they're so young, they're so young, they're so young. And it's like, dude, you pay attention to this just as much as everybody else. You know, it's not that much younger than any other season. Like, come yeah. on, like the reaction to that. Yeah, it might be a little bit younger than recent seasons, but the way I'm looking at it is, there's just no outlier of a super old person because that's really all Co Wrong was. I know you had people in their thirties and. You probably had a few more people in their 30s, but if you didn't have Joe, it's a very young season yet again. So uh, it doesn't bother me at all. We'll see how it goes, but I think that it was a crazy reaction. Yeah. Well, we'll get to talking about that when it actually happens. We're not even at season 35 yet, so we, yeah, we have know. a lot of time. I, I know it's the off season. I know we're all looking for stuff to talk about, but why don't we talk about the first three episodes of Survivor Panama, one of my favorite seasons. And I got to say, too, with these three episodes – None of the boots made sense. I will say that for Survivor Panama. None of the first three boots make any sense for the point that they're at in that game. First boot of Tina, it should have been Suri. I guess they really got rid of Tina because she just wasn't meshing with the tribe. And I really do think that had a lot to do with her son's death. I think that if her son doesn't die, she doesn't come out there and she fits in a little bit better. I know she's going to be loud no matter what. Um, she was actually supposed to be on Guatemala and he died right before... Who is she supposed to replace on Guatemala, I wonder? Or I want to know who replaced her. Because I, I forget. Would be Amy, I guess. Uh, I guess that would be like your similar comparison. But I, I remember reading she was supposed to be on Guatemala. And then that happened. And she came out on Panama. And, you know, obviously dealing with that. And then going out on, a, on an island just is such a difficult thing to go through. So yeah. she, I think she could have done really, you know, it's, it's just the Delta difficult hand thing. Yeah, and then jumping to season two, I just want to run through these real quick. Jumping to, or to episode, episode two. two. Yeah, you have... Back to the Australian Outback. Yeah, back to the Australian <laughs> Outback when Kel gets booted. Um, <laughs> no, so Melinda goes in episode two, and this one makes no sense because if somebody wants to quit this early, Shane, he's an athlete, but he's crazy, and he's not that likable to these people. There's no reason to keep him at this point. And then the third one, which is the one that bothers me the most, this was the re this is the reason Lamina spoilers for everybody who's watching this for the first time. If you're watching this for the first time and you're paying attention to us, you're crazy anyway because you're paying attention to us on your first time. <laughs> but all I want to say is that Misty boot makes zero sense and this is why Lamina falls apart. Lamina, you have Nick and Aaron made the wrong choice here by a lot because you have the two of them, you Austin. have Austin. What am I saying? Aaron. Aaron. God, see, I'm all over the place. I work with an Aaron. I work with a Trish. It's not fair. They're in my head. They're not in work mode anymore. I'm trying to turn it off. Um, anyway, you have Nick and Austin who are sitting right in the middle. You have Terry and Dan on one side. You have Sally and Misty on the other. And you have Ruth Marie who literally has no allegiance to anybody. Why would you boot Misty and make it clear to Sally that she's on the outside when you have Ruth Marie who's already on the outside? And if the old people want to team up, they can team up and boot you because they're going to, you know, brainwash you into voting out Sally next if they really wanted to. This boot, this Misty boot just made no sense. Maybe they just couldn't look at her bug bites anymore because she was absolutely covered oh my God, and it looked like smallpox. Like, I was going to say, like, wrote down, it looks like chicken pox. That is bananas. She was gross, uh, but there's <laughs> no reason for Misty to have gone third here. I do not get it. I think she was likable enough. I think this is Terry and Dan making the right move for them, but I think it's Austin and Nick not putting their foot down and making the wrong move for them, which ultimately leads to what happens the rest of the time with Lamina. And I remember really liking Misty, and especially like going into this. She goes to exile before really even talking to her tribe. And first of all, Danielle loses that challenge, that first Flint challenge. She's like, all right, like guys, I get it. Like, I got to go to exile. And good on her for like offering herself up. And then when the other girl's like, oh, no, no, I originally thought, I was like, yeah, like, yeah, Danielle, you go. But they actually went for the rock, paper, scissors. And Misty, like, she really put herself out there. Like, obviously, that was one of the first times, like, you have Exile Island, first time with Exile Island, the first time, first few times we're lying about idols, even though Judd lied about placement of the idol last season, mm -hmm. but it's neither here nor there. But she was, like, she was playing the game, and she was really like working those guys and i thought it seemed like she had a really good relationship with them and obviously it was you know you only get x amount of time but everything was pointing to taking ruth marie out and like you said there was no 
reason to keep her there. We learn later on that there's a bit of an allegiance, but not enough to vote out like a very physically and strategically capable person. Well, and that's what I thought was funny is that they're talking like Austin's actually the one who brings it up to Terry and Dan and says the weakest person in that challenge by far is Misty. And it's like, you were just trying to align with Misty. Keep all of your options open. You're only at, there's, you're only at final 14 or final 13 would, is what it would be after this. So you're only going to be at final 13. You got to keep all of your options open here. Why not? Because what happens if Dan or Terry start being crazy or just start, not that they're going to be. Um, but what if they did and you're like, well, I'd rather work with them. Well, you're never going to work with Ruth Marie because she's going to work with the old people before she ever works with you. So I think this is a huge, huge blunder on their part. And I don't even think it's because Misty didn't get to bond with them because really the only people Misty didn't get to bond with was her original tribe. And the only one who was there from her original tribe on this new tribe was Sally. And her and Sally got along great. <laughs> yeah, they, they worked out great. They were a little too some together. They were perfect. Yeah. So I think that the Misty boot – there's there's a two th there's two things that really get you with the Misty thing or that that Lamina did really wrong this episode that ends up hurting them. One, they took it, they played new school survivor when they sent Bruce to exile again. If this yeah. was now, there would not be as much repercussion. But by them sending Bruce right after Bruce got back and how Kasaya was saying he's like the savior pretty much, for them to then turn around and send Bruce it pretty much said to these group of crazy people, we're playing it where it's us against you no matter what. And that's what ends up happening this entire season is it ends up being Kasaya versus Lamina. And this is where it starts. And not for nothing, like, I know she, like they were being just so bluntly honest. And they're saying, oh, my gosh, Bruce is giving us water. He's so great. And then in the previous episode, Shane, I think I wrote down exactly what he said. He said, we are in a dire situation mm -hmm. in front of Lamina. And that's funny, but you, like, why are you saying that? And then on the completely crazy. opposite, I know, I'm trying to, like, put logic in his mind, which I understand is a little unreasonable. But you go from we're in a dire situation to things are so great because Person X is here. So, of course, they're going to put Person X away and isolate him even further. At this point in the game, he has spent more time on Exile Island than with any tribe. Yeah. And that's what that's what really gets – that's what – it's a great move in New School, but this is a bad move in the first season of this. And really, this is Terry and Dan and Austin and Sally and Misty. They're all thinking ahead saying, okay, whatever. Like, we're thinking to the very end, and Terry even says at one point, um, hey, like, I want – my goal was to keep this tribe intact to the merge. So, like, they were going to play in a very old school game, which is exactly what Kasaya – wants to do too. It's well, do you think it was a bad move to send Bruce to Exile Island? I think, no, no, no. I think it was a bad move in this season to send Bruce to Exile Island because it's so early. You got to think this is early in Survivor where this is the first time that Exile Island is really playing a role. I know Janu went, but this is like the first time it's really playing a role. And to send Bruce back to back like that shows you're playing a very ruthless it's us versus you game. New school survivor, people look at that and say, we've seen this before. That's, that is what makes sense. But at this moment, you just told that tribe, we're trying to decimate you, which is great for now. But if they ever get the upper hand, they're all psychotic. Now, granted, it's because it's the Kasaya 6. But see, but I, would, I would say that's pretty old school because old school is going back to my tribe versus you, your tribe. Right now, new school, it's all about, like, it's all about flipping and trying different things. This is saying, hey, we're taking you on. And... They had won a majority of the challenges that we've watched. So I thought that was a perfectly like, fine move on their part. They just ended up losing. Like, I think that's a bad move just because we know how it ends. But what I'm going to say is with this, too, this is a season where Danielle blows that first challenge after definitely volunteering to participate. She loses that first challenge, and everybody sits there and says, no, 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 we'll go, we'll go. It shouldn't be your fault. That's the way the people were still playing. They might have been playing where it was it's us versus you, but they were still playing the game of, it's not fair to send somebody back to back like that. This isn't like token chains or Gabon, really, where it was oh, like, so let's send sugar every time. <laughs> that was so mean. But I don't, I don't know. I don't see it like that. I, I, I guess I see it as a pretty decent move. So, well, I don't know. Yeah. I just feel, regardless, I, regardless, they send him twice in a row and then it's pouring rain and they're sitting in their tarp and they're like, let's think about him. Like, yeah. how bad do you feel? And, and to know <laughs> where Bruce ends on this, like how this season ends for Bruce. And like I said, 
everybody who our big fans know how it ends, so we don't have to tell you the punchline. But this anybody, is a spoiler who, friendly zone. Well, we're trying to be a little friendly. I mean, we have to talk about obviously ours is win, but like other than that, you know, we try to be a little friendly. So at least going week to week, even if you just forget the boot order or just you know haven't watched it since then, but knowing how Bruce's storyline ends on this season. It's incredible to watch these first three episodes and watch how he just gets the crap kicked out of him. And then how it all ends for him. It's like, man, this was probably the most relentless however many days for him ever. Yeah, he had it. He had a really rough. And speaking of Aris's win, this kind of goes back to the Melinda boot. I know we're hopping all over the place. Aris, the winner, sits down and says, you know what? I convinced Shane not to quit. One of y'all's going home, but I don't know which one. And Courtney the shining beacon of logic in that moment says, I can't believe he just said that to them. And then yeah. Shane tries to correct it, but makes it worse. It's the beginning of this insane tribe. And it's so cringeworthy to watch. It's so cringeworthy. And there's no reason for Aris to save Shane here. I mean, because Aris, he might be like, Oh, I got to decide with Shane. I got to decide with Shane. I think Suri and Bob dog were closer. And mm -hmm. that's why, uh, Aris probably tries to save Shane here, but it still doesn't make sense because you're getting Bruce in and maybe they're worried like Bruce comes in, he hangs out with Bob Dog, he hangs out with Sari, he hangs out with Melinda and then that's what happens. But to keep Shane here, who's clearly insane and say, we got to keep him in, we got to keep him in, even though he wants to quit. There's no reason to talk him into this. Aris, I think it's a very good move for Aris because he wants to keep the people he knows he can beat and people who will be loyal to him because he knows Shane swearing on his son's life as crazy as Shane is. Shane will never go back on that. But, like, this is a good move for Aris. But then to go over and just say, we're voting one of you out right there, it's such a dumb move and such a stupid, like, I'm 21 years old and I'm so it arrogant. Never, never goes well. Never yeah. goes well when you do that. There's so much history behind that. And I wrote down what Shane said. He followed up to Aris's comment and said, he sounded insincere. I don't care which of you is going home. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Because whoever goes now is going next. And guess what? Sari doesn't go next. She, oh, she certainly doesn't. And this is what would remind me on top of this. Aris picked Sari. He picked Sari over... I actually don't know off the top of my head who he picked her over, but he went out of his way to pick Saree. So yeah. you, there's some like innate connection that they have. And as I, we, we know how this ends, obviously they do end up have some, having some form of connection, but it is pretty crazy that he picks her and then can't even, like, won't even look at her afterwards. Yeah, I know. I know. And that's why in terms of TV, because Sai is a much better tribe, but Lamina is so level-headed. I really love this Lamina tribe, and I know that's a very unpopular thing to say. I know, like, Lamina is, like, want, like considered, like, one of the most boring tribes. I love this tribe because they're level-headed, and you need that yin to the yang here because if you don't have that, it's just too much crazy going on. Kasaya is all the crazy. The other tribe is Dan the astronaut, Terry the naval pilot. You know, you have Austin, who's like the young level-headed guy. Nick, who can barely speak above like a whisper. Sally <laughs> and Misty, who are both also pretty level-headed, even though they're like over there flirting. Like it's it's not extensive. It's like and reasonable then, flirting. And then Ruth Marie, who's the quietest one out of all, all of the original older women tribe. Like you need that level-headedness to offset – the other side otherwise it's just too much every episode you need to be able to go to a calm you know yeah i'm totally with you and and i'm like i am in the camp of like kasaya is one of the greatest tribes of all time as a viewer but just because they're really fun doesn't make lamina horrible i just, i think it's one of those things where because one side is so extreme everyone just assumes that lamina is incredibly boring they're not they're just reasonable human beings yeah and i say it i've said it i think the whole time there's no doubt in my mind, Terry's my favorite person from this season. And th yeah, that's Terry's great, especially over, early on. Yeah, I mean, that's over Suri. That's over Shane. Terry is my favorite person on this season. I have no problem saying that. And I'll go out there and I'll, I'll say now that when – that in this season, I love Shane and I love Suri. Dan is my second favorite. And I don't even care. You guys can go crazy on that. <laughs> Terry and Dan, that's my – that's like I love that pairing. They're two older guys who are just level-headed, and 
I love watching that. I think the two of them are like two of my favorites. Dan is such a positive force over there. And yeah, it's great to offset it with the other tribe. And I love Shane and I love Sari. And I'm glad we've gotten Sari as many times as we have. And I wish we would have gotten Shane more. But Dan and Terry for me is where, you know, what I'm the most invested in at this point because it's something to root for. You can't root for Shane. Like you just yeah, you can't know, do it. That's the thing. You don't really want the others to win. You just want to watch them. And exactly. one thing that Dan, like, I like Dan. Like, I, I don't know. I find him, I, like, the astronaut thing I think is hilarious because he treats it like he's got to hit an immunity idol, and which is just super funny. I don't know. He almost reminds me of, I mean, I don't want to say it's just because he, like, he's a tall, skinny, older male. But, like, I immediately go back to Gary probably because we just watched Guatemala. I can't get super invested in him because I don't find him to be, like, extremely interesting. But he's very positive and... I mean, the the way his his story ends up is is brutal. It's really and really sad, and it just it's it's sad. It's really, really yeah. sad. And that's what always gets me. I think on first viewing, when you watch Panama, Dan might not hit you like that. But watching this now, this is my third time watching Panama, and I haven't watched it in a while. And I remember when I rewatched it, I really liked Dan. And now I'm rewatching it again, and I'm like. God, Dan's so positive and wants to be there so bad and is loving every second of this. And him and Terry, how far could they go together? And you really start to wonder how far could they have gone together? Mm -hmm. And I really, really like Dan. And, you know, he's one of those people you'll never see again. He's also a Miami guy. I don't know if you know that. He went to Miller. No um, way. Yeah, well, after he I went can. to Princeton, Cornell, and something else. And then he went to Miami to get a doctor. But whatever. he went to Miami. But he went to, he went to Miami after all of those because – those are the prerequisites to get into Miami for anybody. Yeah, did you hear wondering. that? Phil and I actually got into all those schools, but instead we decided to go to Miami. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I was like, Cornell? Nah. And now that we're talking, yeah, whatever. But now that we're talking about this, and I don't want to get ahead of the first three episodes, but this is some foreshadowing. As fun as this season is, because that's, I, that's a word I think a lot of people use to describe Panama, it is incredibly sad because Tina goes home. That is extremely yeah. sad. Melinda goes home. She has no reason to go home. She's fighting to stay alive. Misty goes home. It's not particularly sad, but it's a little like, oh my gosh, why did she go home? And one of the saddest moments that I, maybe this is the first season I've ever watched, but Ruth Marie is running in the third meeting challenge. She's got that bag. I remember like almost crying with my mom because I felt so bad for her. She's running. She's got like, her face is bright. She's so excited. And she runs and Bob Dog doesn't even grab her. He grabs the, the, cusp of her shirt and touches his own like touches his own pad and they win oh my god my heart broke for her and it's the best moment this is like bob dog in episode one he has that funny line where he's like you know i, I wrote it down he says uh where is it i i wrote it down i'm the i'm the charter member and president of the beefcake tribe you know so he has that funny line and then he disappears and then in episode two he doesn't do anything and bob dog is on the cover of survivor panama if you go and look at the cover of this DVD box set, Bob Dog is on there. And I'm, I am always said to myself, how the hell is Bob Dog on there? It's episode who, three where Bob Dog who's really. The cover? Who's, who are the six on the cover? It's Bob Dog, Sari, Shane, Terry, and Aris. Makes sense, except for Bob Dog. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Danielle? Danielle is on there. Who so is not nice. on there? One of them isn't on there. Shane might. Who is not on there? I'm going to look this up real quick. Panama cover. Bob Dog is on there, though. It's like the Kasaya Six. I mean, that's your. All right, it's, I have here. It's Sari, Aris, Shane, Bob, Dog, Terry, Danielle. Yeah. Wait, what are you looking at? Because I don't see. Oh, oh, in one of them, Bob Dog replaces Courtney. Oh, dude, there's no Courtney I mean, one. The one that sells on CBS Store and on Amazon has Bob Dog. Yeah, that's that makes zero sense to me. Isn't that crazy? So you're watching it, and it's episode three where Bob Dog really starts to break out of his shell a little bit. And I think that move to win it there is so brilliant because he knows he's going to beat her. And he mm -hmm. waits for her to get close enough and doesn't give her a chance to drop the bag, to throw the bag to anybody, and he just grabs her and pulls her. And that's it. I mean, she has no chance. And like, it's so sad. I remember watching that. Every time I watch it, I go, how do they lose? Like, Terry dominates Bob Dog in the first one. He pins him instantly, and Bob Dog has no chance. Like, Terry is one of the best athletes to ever play on this show. I don't care what mm -hmm. anybody says. Oh, my God. No question. Like, like, there's no question. Not for an older man, not for anything. He like, is one of the human. best athletes. <laughs> yeah. 
He might – him and – I would have loved to have seen him go up against Ozzy in fans versus favorites. We never got to see it. I would have loved to have seen it um, mm-hmm. because he is so insanely talented at everything. And when he pins Bob Dog, here's like a 30-year-old guy who's all muscle, and Terry gets him one moment, and Bob Dog can't get out. And they're all yelling, Bob Dog, get out, get out, get out, get out. He can't yeah, get out. He's like, and I, I love- can't. There's a fighter pilot on top of me. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's instant. And I was like, how are they going to lose this? And when Ruth Marie's running on the sideline, I'm like, how are they going to lose this? And Bob Dog just, boop, that's oh, it. And it's crazy. Marie's Ruth Marie should have went home after that. She should have. I know. But, yeah, she didn't. She survived for long, longer than people expected, and I, I got to give her that. Another thing I noticed in that challenge is, like, it's the classic, like, all right, we're going to put all the girls first, and they're all going to, like, mud wrestle. But you cut to Aris, and he's just like, this is everything I never knew I wanted. I and with the look on his face, it's a pure joy. It's so funny. I, I could watch like a compilation of those faces on Survivor forever because they're, they're so human. Like they're so natural. It's awesome. It's hilarious. Yeah, he's he's so fun. I, I noticed that too. I was like, God, they've been out there for how many days? And for the first three, they didn't have any girls near them. And now they're yeah. out there just wrestling each other like, Jeez. Yeah, and when the new Kasaya tribe is formed, one of the first thing like Shane says, he's like, "I love having girls around camp." And we don't get, a, we rarely get eye contact with the cameras. I know we got some with Sandra, pretty much every time she's ever played. Yeah. But Sri gets, she either hits the eye contact or she gets as close as possible, because he goes, "I love having girls around," and she just glares at the camera. It is awesome. Because the only girls he means are Danielle and Courtney, and yeah, yeah. about halfway through that episode, he no longer meets Courtney. <laughs> yeah, I know. He and oh my god, the tension between him and Courtney is so thick. Well, and it's it's episode three where Shane really starts to lose his mind when he he does the I just want mine, I want mine, and like you're like, sitting there and you're watching, you're, like, you're what? <laughs> where did this come from? Like, what is going on? Like, and even Courtney's like, why is he yelling at me? Like, and it's so much the detox of the cigarettes. Oh, that's exactly amazing. what this like. I'm sure Shane in real life when he could smoke cigarettes is probably a really cool guy to hang out with. But during this season, he just cannot keep it together. And those moments where he just starts flipping out and it's always Courtney, which makes it even funnier because Courtney is just so out there. Um, right. It's so funny. He just keeps going and going and going and going. And you're just like, oh, my God, how do they keep this guy? How do and they keep this guy? And that's what's so great about Shane and Courtney. Like. They're very different time, t- very different types of crazy. Because I know, like, I well, we will get to Courtney. She was one of my favorite, favorite characters, like early on. I absolutely love her. But she, I mean, she just sits there and she's like, "I don't. Why? How did this happen? Like, yeah. I know she's nuts, but she's also just such an easy target." And he just feeds on her. And one of my favorite Survivor quotes of all time comes out of this this season, but I don't think they've said it yet, so I'm gonna wait on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. And, and, and Courtney, I, I never really was a fan of Courtney, but the thing with Courtney is like, they brought her out there to be like the free spirit. She was like, what a fire dancer or something. She did. It is yeah. still a fire dancer. It's still a fire dancer with the turtle that's dead. And she's making the heart around it saying it's like mother earth and all that. And to put her on a tribe with a guy who's detoxing is the worst thing imaginable. <laughs> like it's, it's so great. Pure and insanity. They, but do not forget they were not put together they all picked each other. Well, and that's that's probably the best part of this season, and this is why I wish Survivor would go back to doing some fun stuff like this. When was the last time we saw a damn schoolyard pick them? We just don't see them anymore. Oh, and Before this, they know each other, yeah. Yeah, and this is so great when you have Terry and Danielle picking their tribes, and Terry picks a tribe that goes straight along with his personality, mm-hmm. and Danielle picks this tribe. Well, her first pick is Aris, right? The cool guy with the Boston tattoo. Oh, that's that's Shane. So she picks she the picks cool Shane. guy because they're both from Boston. So that's what she's – or because she thinks he's from Boston at this point. Yeah, even know. though Boston is the name of his son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there you go. So she picks him because of that. And from there, it's just pure insanity. I mean, Shane and he picks Courtney picks now Courtney. that I'm thinking about this. Picks Courtney. Shane picks and Courtney. Then, and then Courtney p- – picks Aris because they've there's already been so much sexual tension there. They've yeah. shown them winking at each other like ten times. Well, because she picks the same, Aris, Aris is right. They're the same person. Aris? Aris and her dude, Aris is I trying to start fire with like, her hands. He is, which is like my favorite thing ever. That's like Fabio levels of like how is this person a winner? But yeah. Aris is much more level headed than her. 
Oh no, he's much more level-headed, but he's still- the same like concept of person, yes. but with execution, it's very different. He still has the delusion of Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm in like work mode. Like the concept's there, but the execution is different. Yeah, no, I totally <laughs> agree with you. Um, so, so, so yeah, you have that. And then Aris, I think, ends up picking Suri. And he picks three, and then three, and then three picks Bob Dog, which is crazy that Bob Dog was left that late, and yeah. like then Dan gets picked over Bruce. Bruce ends up going to uh, Exile Island, which he's pumped because he can't be voted out. Uh, Dan, I'm so happy you got picked to be on Terry's tribe because we get to see more of the Terry Dan like, bonding. God, did you imagine if da had Dan <laughs> gone to Exile and then he would have been on Kasaya? That would have been a fish out of water. <laughs> that would have been insane. Uh, uh, Dan and Suri might have run the game had that happened. Assuming they both make it. Well, you know what the other thing is too, though? Here's the, yeah, the other thing is too, oh no, I guess because those four would have gotten rid of them. But let's say everything kind of went that way. Dan and Sari probably would have ended up teaming up with Terry, even though I know Sari and Terry don't get along as things go on here. But mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's crazy, like that that was the tribe that was picked. And then look at what Terry and everybody he picked, what they picked. And it's it's really crazy how that all worked out. And, you know, the fact that Nick and Austin stay together, Dan and Terry stay together, and they couldn't pick each other. But they were the two closest on those tribes. Sally and Misty stay together, and Sally and Misty definitely probably get along better than Danielle and Courtney. Um, <laughs> so it's it's really crazy that all of that – that's exactly how that goes down. Bruce never finds the idol. Um Let's see. Misty doesn't find the idol when she goes out there the first time, but no. she comes back and tries to play it up like she did. Yes. Which, I mean, because this is kind of one of the first times this happens, you watch it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so obvious she doesn't because she's making it so blatant. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that's one of the, that's the first time someone's ever walked back from exile and Jeff has said, well, how did it go? Yeah. So with like really, again, good on her that she played it well. One thing that, that I thought of, this is pretty much irrelevant. But when Bruce, when Bruce goes to exile, he gets Flint. Did Missy get Flint when she went to exile? I don't think so. I don't think she did. I remember thinking that. I was like, how did he score with Flint? Like, she got screwed. I mean, yeah, they both her, scored because the they first were in exile. But yeah. I don't know. I, I remember thinking that was odd. And really, the only way that this works, that I hate when they do this to people right at the beginning because it always screws the game or screws their game. It always screws them. Every time. Garrett and David. Um, Sandy and Sierra. Sandy and Sierra. Yeah, Sierra, I mean, doing her thing. <laughs> I mean, it always screws the game. At least Sierra is probably the one who overcame it the most. But you keep Misty behind. The only way this works is when you start with four tribes of four. And it was lucky for Misty that she only she had to beat only one other tribe. And they end mm -hmm. up winning that challenge. But they only had to beat one other tribe in order to be safe. And all she wasn't bonding with was three people. And they knew they were going to swap at 15 anyway. So this is the only time that like I'm really okay with ostracizing somebody right off the bat because it normally just screws their game, but it actually didn't completely screw Misty, although it obviously puts her in a worse position. It doesn't absolutely screw her. Um, and especially yeah. to be sent after such a BS challenge that somehow Terry still wins. Such, um, a, luck such a luck challenge. And somehow Terry still wins it. Like, that's what blows yeah. my mind. <laughs> and then also, I mean, this is something that I want to complain about, but I also completely understand. We break it up into four tribes of four. Like, really interesting, because if you piss one person off, you're going home. But then, the, like, the next day, they scrap it. Some Usually, like, now they're scrapping it two episodes later. They scrap this one episode in. And it's probably because the tribes are so incredibly small. It's probably hard for airtime, but it's also hard because you lose two in a row and all of a sudden you have a Matt Singh. So, well, yeah. And yeah. I think they knew they were going to do this the whole time because you have 16, you keep one person behind, you hope that tribe doesn't lose so that that person doesn't go home. And then you know that you're going to do the schoolyard pick at 15 and somebody's going to go to exile. And then you finally get into the winning tribe picks a loser to go to exile. So mm -hmm. like, I think that's why they did it this way. I don't have too much of a problem with it. I just hate when somebody gets left behind and those girls, I'm sorry to all of them but you're dumb for not just sending Danielle. If Danielle says, I should go because I blew the challenge, you say, okay, that's fine. All right, bye, Danielle. You cannot try to make her feel better and be like, oh, no, one of us should go because you at least tried in the challenge. It's like if she feels that she should go, this is Survivor, you have to send her. You have to. If, in the words of three, if she wants to quit, let him quit. 
yeah. Danielle wants to go to exile, like, and and good on Danielle for offering it up. Like that was that was fine. The decision was made for everyone, and they decided to be nice and rock paper scissor it. Yeah, they decided to rock paper scissor it, and that's why Misty's the well, not the reason, but Misty's the first girl to go. People might be suspicious of her, and this is always a tricky situation with this super idol. Is that if you lose, or if you don't have the idol, but you play it up like you do, you're almost daring people to vote for you. And mm -hmm. if they do vote for you, because there's no way to flush that idol. So if they do vote for you and they also vote for somebody else and you don't have that idol and you get the most votes, we kind of saw this happen to Val back in San Juan del Sur. You're putting a bigger target on yourself. And who knows? Maybe that's what the guys were thinking when they said, let's get rid of Misty. She might have the idol. And if she doesn't go, it's Ruth Marie who goes. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they're thinking. They kind of knew that's where the votes and everything were going. So maybe they were like, this is our chance. But because you don't actually hear them say that, I don't want to assume that. But... Yeah, we know we really only get one conversation as to why Missy should go home, and it's because Austin thought that she didn't perform well in the challenge. So, again, we're still we're in a simpler time of Survivor when we're getting a lot of camp life, and they, in their mind, Misty didn't do as well in the challenge. So, Missy went home. Yeah, and I know we're at like we're at like thirty eight minutes here, and I know we try to keep these like around an hour at least, and we want to do some mm -hmm. comments. But I do want to just say something with this initial tribe. You have the young women who are just walking around doing nothing. You have the older women who do they start the fire or like they have a hard time starting fire or whatever, right? They do get a fire. Eventually. They do get a fire eventually. You have the young men whose shelter is one of the most pathetic things you've ever seen. And then you how did they sleep there? Right? And then you cut to the older men. And they have like it's a like bonfire a going. They I have know. Like, and like this is a tribe with shame. They don't even show us them making the fire because it was probably so easy for them. And they have yeah. like a bonfire and like a perfect shelter and they're just clicking. And there were realistically only three of them doing that. Yeah, because Shane sure as hell wasn't. And when Shane calls Bruce Daffy Duck. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Br Shane, Shane is just... Shane is just such great TV, and I always wonder, did they not bring him back for fans versus favorites because they didn't want him to go through the same mental breakdown again of, like, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. I, I, don't, I don't even know if it's, a, if it's the quit thing. I think it's I, – I don't think it's a quitting thing. I think it's an overarching – they were fearful for his, like, health physically and mentally because after Panama, I don't know the exact timeline, but – he did go through a lot of difficult situations and I think yeah. they may have learned their lesson with Brandon Hans. I know that was like a long time later, but I think they were wary for those reasons, even though they'll never tell us that. Yeah. And, and like Troy Zan said in his podcast, sorry, Troy Zan, I threw you under the bus, but he said, you know, this, that, that whole pick them thing, you know, the America votes, yeah, he's yeah. like, you know, how did that work out so perfectly? Shane got how hosed. Did, how did Shane not get picked? Shane got hosed. Shane got absolutely hosed. People who don't watch love, Survivor love Shane. Like yeah, he, Shane got hosed. Yeah, he got screwed. So, yeah, Troy Zan, I'm, I'm all in on that conspiracy thing. Yeah. So I think that Shane's been kind of held off just because of that. But, I mean, these early episodes are just – his breakdown, his mental like breakdown is obviously what eats up these things. But you have the storyline of Sari. You have the storylines of Terry and Dan. You have um, Bruce who keeps going to exile. You have the – you know, really – um, what was I going to say? It was, it was like, you have like this whole four person alliance that nobody, that they don't like each other at all, who is trying to stick together already. Like you have so many storylines that hit so quickly in Panama. What I always knock Panama for is once the merge hits, it's so predictable, but you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe this time around, I'll like it more. I know I like Guatemala a hell of a lot more this time than I did my first time watching it, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I just, you know, it's always the disappointment of Terry doesn't win. That's what always hits me. <laughs> I think it's, I think predictable is like not really the word I'd go with because, yeah, you have that super tight alliance, but they have no business being that tight. So I just keep waiting for them to fall apart or for Terry to lose. Like you wait for something to crack and neither of them crack. So they have to start eating themselves and they have to eat themselves earlier than most of those super tight alliances go. Yeah, but, no, I that's mean, true. So, I mean, we'll get to that, but it's, well, because it's I, I, hope six you it. I hope you end up liking it more than more than you did, because this is this is my Will's Guatemala. Like this is my season that I had ranked so high, and you guys were like, "Why?" So I'm I'm hoping you I'm hoping you start to like it more. 
Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, you want to jump to some comments, and we can kind of keep talking about the episodes, but we should at least Yeah, talk. I, I looked on YouTube, and I actually didn't see any. I'm well, because the, the YouTube comments don't pop up, um, and I don't want to – I didn't want anybody mm -hmm. posting on the Judd thing. Um, oh, I, th I, I thought I told people to comment on it, but whatever. No, I didn't want everybody posting on the Judd thing. Keep that as Judd. Um, so all of them are on Twitter. Um, right. It's okay. It's the first episode. Let's do it. I just want to start off. Brooke did say, "Did you see this mashup logo?" And the mashup logo for Survivor looks absolutely sick. Anybody who hasn't seen that, it looks incredible. I guess they threw it on a buff or something, but it looks awesome. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Send it to me. It's on. You can you can check Twitter. You're good. Uh, wait, what? Wait, what? Twitter? Which? July fourteenth, Brooke. July fourteenth. Anyway, I'll keep going. Tyler Belmont. So yeah, I, I try to. Whatever. You go ahead. Tyler Belmeyer, I just got back from a camp, and the speaker is a finalist to be on Survivor and has been in the process for over four years. Well, thank you for not telling us his name or her name because we don't want them to get screwed here. Um, oh, that logo is really cool. Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah, it's dope. Chuck says, rewatching Micronesia right now. That's great, Chuck, but we're rewatching Panama. You should be rewatching yeah. with us. We'll get to Micronesia one day. We will eventually. <laughs> Micronesia. Yeah, Micronesia is a really good season rewatch, but yeah, we're, we're rewatching Panama right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I'm at Ice X, is that? Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Okay, cool. Ice X, Hidden Idol is first played before the vote, then after the vote is revealed. They eventually got a rate more dramatic and risky now. It's definitely more dramatic now. I don't know if it's as risky because... No, it's much riskier. You have to play it right. And the, after the votes are read, if you play it after the votes are read, there's no risk involved. You just play it after you're voted out. Yeah. Oh, oh he, okay, so I'm in... Yeah. I'm interpreting him saying now as in speaking in Panama now, not speaking. No, 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 no. He's speaking in 2017 now. Oh, okay. Because I was like, it's not risky at all. It's like the best idol. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, um, Isaac says that the first tribal council after talking about how difficult Survivor is, Melinda tells Jeff, you should try it. Hilarious. We Melinda, didn't, yeah. We didn't Melinda's great in her two episodes. She is really good. And then, so, I mean, that whole like older women's tribe, like, Jeff, why don't you give it a try? And Sri's like, Famously, stay on the couch. Like yeah. they're like Jeff. Like what? What did you sign me up for? This thing sucks. Well, and especially Shane's since like ripping on it too. You've never had to be the four older women who are just fending for yourselves. And like Tina could do it a thousand times over. But the other three were probably expecting like I'll come out there. I'll have somebody to like lean on. You have nobody to lean on. And like Sari, because you voted somebody. her out. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, they vote out Tina. I honestly think that if Tina would have told them about her son, she probably would have stayed in the game, and they probably would have booted Sari. But mm -hmm. you know. You can't say your strategy should be tell people that. So yeah, exactly. Um, Kelly, I was always bummed Missy got voted out so early. She had potential, but likely gave another chance. Yeah, and these like middle. I mean, now these are middle of the show survivor seasons, and I thought I thought Missy had a lot of potential, but we're we're definitely never going to see her again. A lot no, of people I, from Panama, they're either legends or they're not coming back. Yeah, and that's the thing with with Missy. I feel like she was too dangerous down the line and not useful enough now. Like, I think that the older guys were saying to themselves, Ruth Marie is not dangerous later. And she's, she's just as she's only a little bit less useful than Misty. Now Misty is dangerous later. And I think everybody saw how good Misty could be. And that's what got her in trouble. It's a lot like Dolly back in Vanuatu. You get yourself in trouble because you're actually too good. <laughs> Love me a good Vanuatu reference. You're welcome. I'm here for you. Thanks. All right. FTO. Ice X. Oh. oh, wait. No, you, you, wait, did, did Tyler Bellman just retweet just tweet the same thing? Did again? he retweet himself? Uh, no, I think he just read the exact same tweet twice. I love the commitment. I didn't read the whole thing. Uh, Ice X. Suri was so close to getting voted out the first two weeks, but that's where her magic beans, her magic begins. Otherwise, we never hear from her again. Totally. And totally. again, like, I'm, I, I I'm, I'm promise I'm not going to make this whole season a massive Suri love fest. But Sari framed both of her potential boot episodes perfectly. They were talking about how useful Tina was at camp. Sari turned that into, well, actually, Tina's kind of bossy and thinks we don't work hard. Yeah. Melinda was saying, I'm fighting my tail off. Sari starts crying and says her family will be disappointed in her. Mm -hmm. She's, I mean, she had no she business staying this long, but she played it so well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Isaacs, again, as bad as Sari was in individual challenges, she did well in the third episode, team challenges. Not her fault, Aris uh, muffed her winning shot. Also, they can't, Jeff has a really tough time pronouncing Aris and Sari. He keeps he calling her Aris and Sari. Sari, yeah, I know. 
like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess those are funkier names. Yeah, you got to use them. But yeah, she was great. She just, who did she sit on? She just like sat on someone. Yeah. Well, and, and I want to talk about two real quick. We have the first episode where Cerise talking about how she's afraid of leaves. And then in episode two, the last two snakes were buried in a pit of leaves. Poor Cerise. Excellent Saray. point. I know. Poor Cerise. They know how to get her fears. And she said, I hate leaves. And I, a teeny, there's, a teeny was like, what? What like, are you in for? Out of all the things you could hate, you hate leaves? Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of great moments in these first three episodes. A lot that we oh. probably haven't touched on. There's a lot that went on. I like these challenges so much. It was the same in Guatemala. I like them so much. There's such a nice breakup from puzzle after puzzle after puzzle. You have physical challenges, people actually running through stuff. And you have Nick who carries all the snakes and against Courtney who carries all the snakes. And Courtney actually doesn't do that poorly, but it's like, why is Courtney carrying the snakes? And like yeah. these challenges are just so much more fun. People actually getting physical, tackling each other, trying to rip a bag out. We don't need a puzzle every time. Give me these physical, exciting challenges. The best challenge ever is the opening of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Keep giving us stuff like that. Like that's what we want. I know it's dangerous, but give us the fight scenes. Yeah, seriously. So what? Rupert broke his toe. It's a toe. Yeah. It's not like somebody. Stephanie, Stephanie popped a shoulder. Guess what? She popped it back in. And and who's the person who ends up? Who's the person who gets hurt the most? It's freaking Courtney because you made her jump off a damn, a damn high thing to a net. Of course she's gonna break something. Like that was a dumb yeah. idea. <laughs> get rid of physical challenges. I know. Hey, you do the next comment because you texted me about this. Oh, I did, huh? Hold on. Well. Know. Oh yeah, so Gamer Girl. Gamer Girl, of course you bring this up and we'll give you the credit because we were talking about this. Was Panama episode two the first time they showed the short intro? It was. They I had it was never like, no, it was episode three. Episode three, not episode yeah. two. Episode two, I'm pretty sure they showed the full intro. It's episode they three. Did. Um episode three, they don't show the full intro, and it like threw me for a loop because I was like, what is going on here? I can't believe this. And this is like early. Like this is like you wouldn't think that they would do it like this. And I always thought it was gradual where they start eliminating the people who actually got eliminated. Because I remember they do that like Samoa. They do that in other seasons. But here they just got rid of it. And I was really surprised. Yeah, I know. And, and like you would think they would do it in between seasons, but no, they just decided nope, to drop it. They just right now uh, <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, Gamer Girl again. Oh, we didn't even talk about this. I knew there was a season where someone lost a fishing spear, but I couldn't remember which season it was till now. Sat like Sally's out with Nick, and Nick's like, "No, it's totally fine." And then she comes in, and you see Terry and Dan, and they're like, "What, what the f? Yeah, how did she, how did she drop that?" Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. that's such a great moment. Nick's yeah. reaction and to that is Nick in Panama. There is nothing. <laughs> like, oh no, it's fine. Okay. Like, I'm surprised she didn't get voted out for that. I know, like, it was like you're thinking about the challenge, but they're not eating because of that spear. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? Sally's just less threatening. That's really what yeah. it was. I really think Misty might have went because they might have been in fear that she had an idol, and that was an easy right. time to get rid of her. Um, but, yeah, Sally gets somehow manages to survive that and survives a little bit longer. It's pretty crazy. Um, let's see. We have Gamer Girl didn't know how to shorten this question for Twitter. How did Jeff not notice Nick's accidentally whipping Austin's back with a snake or Sari crashing into Bobby's head during the snake challenge? That was great. Sari just like smashing Bobby's head when she's coming down the hill and he's like getting ready to go under and she just collides into him. Yeah. Doesn't stop at all. Um, there's one other thing I really want to bring up. And I love I love Aris, blood versus water Aris. Panama Aris takes a little bit getting used to when Misty is choking him and he starts yelling at her to stop choking him. He's so whiny in it. And I wish the wambulance thing would like the the fact that he's the one who says somebody call the wambulance later when it's here so he is like crying that you know this like hundred and thirty pound girl is choking him and he's like this big buff dude oh man it's so fun it's, it's so, so funny fun. Aris is oh, I love Aris he's so funny yeah oh my god what a what a character uh, what a character I just want to bring um, that up because the fact that he calls Terry out for the wambulance and he's doing this someone call the wambulance. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, Giovanni Oriana, couldn't Timbertina be better if she wasn't on a tribe with the goddess Sari? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't that she wasn't good because of Sari. I mean, Sari knew she had to go home, and there were there were t three other people. She only had options of three people to get rid of. So, yeah. you know, it all kind of fell into place. I love yeah. Tina. I think it is such a tragedy that she was the first one gone for so many reasons outside of her control. And I'm, I'm not one of those people who's like, bring back first boots, but she's one of the few I would actually be into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Tina, I don't know how much older she is now, but yeah, she definitely was just like a misunderstood character 
Mm-hmm. And it was a weird time. Yeah. Um, Giovanni Oriana, who's somehow managing to tweet here, would you agree that Sari in the first episode is like Cochran in his first episode, seeing as how both were in danger? Yeah, but Sari plays it so much smoother than Cochran. Cochran yeah, that's just right. Yeah, Sari's, I mean, Cochran's playing from behind the whole time, and Sari is just now, like, letting her tribe fall apart, and then they come to her. She's playing it way better than he did, like, yeah. just like you said. Yeah. Um, Giovanni Oriana, do you like Terry's shirt and hat? He looks like he's ready to golf or go on vacation. And that's what's great about Terry. He can be golfing or going on vacation or flying a jet or winning every challenge. And he looks pretty, pretty calm doing it. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like that one challenge where they were throwing the balls at each other, like the oh my God. challenge. They just kept throwing it to Terry. And like they win that challenge because of Terry. Terry yeah, they wins that challenge. Right at him. It was perfect. He didn't even have to try. He was just like, all right, give it to me now. He had that one great catch where he like flipped over the thing. That was an incredible yeah, that catch. Was pretty, but it was still crazy guess. to watch that. And it's like Terry, like they win that challenge because of Terry. They win the first challenge because of Terry. Terry's just a beast this entire season. And I seriously yeah. think he's, you know, this isn't like Colby, where if you actually look at who Colby was up against in Australian at back, by the time the individual portion hit, it was Jeff Barner, who, yeah, he was felt back then. But what was he doing? You yes. had Keith, Tina, uh, Jerry, Amber. Elizabeth, Nick, Alicia, who was physical, but she's not really a physical threat. When you look at what Terry's up against in this season with Nick, Austin, Bob Dog, I mean, Aris, Aris, um, you have Sari, or not Sari, I did not mean to say Sari, that was a joke. Shane, who Shane is coming out here. Yeah, he's a cigarette smoker and everything, but he's saying he misses football practice. When that guy gets the thing in his arm, he looks like he's playing football. I know Nick ends up dragging him over, but Shane has that old school mentality of like like the old guy, like, I'll drag you to the end. I don't give a crap. I can do anything. And he's muscular. Like he's he's very like lean. Yeah. Exactly. So Terry's like one of the greatest challenge beasts of all time. It's insane. It really is. Uh, Adam Heinrichs, I think the move to send Bruce back to exile is good because it limits the number of people to get the idol. That is true. Um, what does with OP idol. idol mean? What's an OP? I don't know. That's I'm why I skipped so, it. I'm so, yeah, I know. I was like, thank God you skipped it. But I asked anyways. Um, yeah, it was a good move. Hell yeah. I didn't want us to look dumb. Um, go ahead. Uh, Adam Heinrichs again. Bob Dog driving Ruth me like Ruth Marie like a rag doll to his mat. During episode three is my favorite moment. She looked so helpless. That's my like my least favorite moment because of how helpless she looks. <laughs> I like how Bob Dog reacts after doing it too. Like he just goes nuts and it's so Yeah, funny. he's like, look at how muscular I am. I'm like, you dragged a pillow. You like dra- Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh Giovanni Ariana, do you agree with me that R is telling Melinda that she's going home is perhaps one of the worst moves made by a winner? It For sure. M- Aris makes a lot of blunders early in this game to yeah. still be the winner. I mean, look how, look how bad that whole tribe was too during that first immunity challenge. The young guys almost blew that. They almost lost that. Mm-hmm. They were terrible. Um, Aris makes a lot of blunders, but he sides with the crazies and he knows how to control them. That's really that's really why he wins. Yeah, and I, a lot of people say that Aris is one of their like lower tiered winners, like one of their worst winners. And I like I never really agree to that. Now I get that argument, but I, I still don't agree with it because the fact that anyone could control that tribe is well, worthy of a million dollars. And and my thing with Aris is I never really respected his game the first time around. But then when I rewatched him in Blood versus Water, I was like, wow, I really like this guy, and he really knows what he's doing. And then when you're rewatching this season, you do put into perspective how psychotic every single person he aligns with is. The only one who's not crazy is Sari, but he didn't let Sari outplay him. No. But he also, early on, he knew they were crazy. Like in episode three, he said, I'm on a tribe with nutballs or nut jobs, whatever he yeah. said. So he, he's very aware of what's going on. He just also needs to do a weird hand thing to start a fire. Yeah, that was so funny. I mean, I, th- I think it was sort of like a joke, but it looked so funny. Yeah. Um, Adam Heinrich, uh, Heinrich, Bob Dog will have more moments in the very near future until his unfortunate, unfortunate demise. Yeah, he's he's charming like, toilets, baby. That's all I want. Yeah. Oh man, that's God. I freaking love this season. One of the best moments in the history of the show. <laughs> uh, Larry Miller with my favorite question of all time: What did Terry do to make Shireen dislike him? Can we crack that case? I will not Great answer question. this question because I will get in trouble. So Alexa, if you want to answer it, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm already mad just reading that. But Alexa, I, if you want to answer, I want I 
would just rather be uninvolved because I'm not the biggest Shireen fan and I really like Terry. There you go. Okay. <laughs> if, right, you wanna, if you ever want to hear my theory, I have a secret Twitter account that I will post from. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> but I have I have plenty of theories on that. That's for my special friends. Um, <laughs> Anyways. Ice Axe. Aris is from my birthplace, Santa Monica. Fun fact, I saw Vetus in Santa Monica. Didn't actually, wasn't on the same side of the street as him and he got in a car. And Bruce is from the yeah. place I grew up, just saying. Wow, that's really cool. Actually, the guy I went to Greece with knows Aris. So there you go. See, he lives in Santa Monica. Aris, still I think, still so lives in Santa connected. Monica. connected. I think Aris still lives there. I don't think he ever moved. I wouldn't move. No, you would. You Have you been to Santa Monica? Yeah, I love it. Well, I was really? a tourist, so yeah, of course yeah. I liked it. Okay, cool. Go live there for like a week. Yeah. Why don't you move to New York so I can go to bed? Yeah, that's true, too. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Adam Heinrichs, again, coming in hot tonight. Nicaragua is the last contestant pick swap, but really Gabon ended it when Jillian picked Chris London. <laughs> that is a – I mean, Chris in, – in, we're talking about Gabon again. In, in Jillian's defense – Picking Crystal is not bad early on because why would you assume that she would be so bad at challenges? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, not a horrible pick. I'm I'm gonna defend her on that one. Not Susan. That is only that is only horrible. The the Crystal pick is only horrible in time in hindsight. Yeah, no, I totally agree. She's an Olympic athlete. Yeah, she blew it. <laughs> um, we have Ice X, Shane's random tattoos remind me of Leonard and Memento. Uh, yeah, right, no there's way. they're so random. <laughs> like, yeah, they're so it, all over the, the place. The Boston, like, reverse tramp stamp, like, right under his belly button. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Um, uh, T uh, Tina was originally supposed to be on Guatemala. Do you think she does better on the season? I think she does significant. Well, first of all, you kind of can do better as long as you don't get voted at first. Yeah. On Guatemala, but I think she I think she would do better. I think she would be, like, a, a decent player. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think, I think she had potential – um small tribe nowhere to hide you know yeah. we didn't get to see all of her um adam heinrichs this is something we did talk about um would you drink bruce's unboiled water i'm like a really weird question um it makes sense it's a totally good question he puts it through the three shirts that everybody's sweating through do you think that this is killing the bacteria i weirdly enough like i like probably think it actually was pretty good I feel like he's one of those people who actually does know how to filter water and maybe they're all sweaty and gross, but I think, but they clearly liked him enough, even though they were all like, yeah, he's so weird. But then they cut to him and he's like, I'm the king of the world. I love but those things. It all worked. It really it did, did work. work. Yeah. Cause none so, of them got sick. Yeah. So I think it's fine. I would drink it. My favorite is when he picks up the one bottle and goes best bottle yet. Like it's water, dude. Like <laughs> best bottle of water. It's, it's, who needs Fiji water when I have my unboiled sweaty t-shirt water? Yeah. It's like when your dad cooks dinner and nobody has complimented him on it yet. So he has to be like, Oh, this is such a great meal. It's like, get yeah. Out of here. <laughs> Isn't this great? Don't you love this food that I made? Cause I love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what this is. Um, all right. Sit for comments. Um, well, we hit like an hour on the nose. Yeah, we did. So we'll be back in a week. I mean, do, do, doing these rewatches is fun. Um, I, I hope more people get involved. I mean, I know it's getting closer to Survivor season, so maybe it's on people's minds more. Guatemala might have been like the appetizer, and this might be the main course. Um, but who Someone knows? Someone hasn't had dinner yet. I know, right? I have not, <laughs> and I cannot wait. I'm trying to decide what I want to eat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this is like this is you know this is going to be fun. We're going to do four through six for next Wednesday. You can do next Wednesday, right? Yeah, I'm free. Which will be my sister's birthday, so I'll definitely Happy do this. Happy birthday! It's Good the thing only present she needs, right? Hanging out with her, yeah. Why doesn't she just watch us t yell at each other? That's what she'll do. I mean, if she goes out with her friends or anything, she's a huge loser. She should be doing yeah. this. Um, super lame. Super <laughs> lame. Um, so anyway, yeah. So we'll be back next Wednesday with four through six, um, and that's really about it. Just you know, keep on, keep on watching. Yeah. Oh, before we go, one other thing I want to say. Why did Bruce not sleep in the skull? Can you sleep in the skull? That's what I want to know. Do we ever get an answer to that? Because he is getting poured on, and that skull definitely had places he could go in. I mean, Misty didn't either. I, I, I feel like that would be easier said than done, and there's probably like a demon under there or something. Hmm. 
This is something that we'll have to look for moving forward in the season because the yes. fact that Bruce was getting drilled and it was clearly fine. And Misty is a bug bite. She's literally just a giant bug bite by the end of this. She has a singular bug bite. Just one. She is, God. Misty starts off this game as like a very pretty girl. And then like after she gets all those bug bites, I'm like, Yeah, bye. she gives me like, she, and I'm not just saying because she's a pretty girl with brown hair. She actually does look like poverty. Like they have this similar facial structure. And then she eats papaya and she lifts her arm to the camera and it's just smallpox. Everywhere. Yeah. Ar <laughs> poverty, I think, has the better island look. She got better yeah. as time went on somehow. <laughs> yeah. Misty did so. not. People Misty do. Got that, that island hot is a thing. Yeah. And poverty is definitely island hot. So, yeah. all right. Let's go. Anyways, let's get um, out of here now that we just did all this. Yeah, um, this was great. I could talk about the season forever. Uh, yeah, so all week, tweet at us, subscribe to Specialist, leave us a comment on this video. We're going to rewatch episodes four through six this weekend into next week. And we'll be back next Wednesday around the same time on Phil's sister's birthday talking about our favorite thing, Survivor. Wow, that was really classy. Good job, Alexa. But I have to, I, like, you know, after, to a couple, after a couple months of practicing it. Now it's ruined because we're not ending on that. That's what I was doing. I was trying to ruin your moment. I have the big moments. You don't get the big moments. All right. Well, logging off now. Bye. Bye.